On today's video, we hear a reading from a brand new book out at the end of the year called Fearless Fairy Tales. The story we're hearing today is called Trumple Stiltskin, all about a funny orange man with a funny orange hairpiece. Um, who's the leader of the United States of craziness. It's all in honour of American Independence Day. That was last week. Also, we do a draw along of Trumple Stiltskin with the illustrator of the book, Rickin Parrick. Hello. Now, you might be wondering what this chap is doing behind me up there. Well, he features in a brand new book called Fearless Fairy Tales that will be out at the end of the year. And I'm very excited to reveal the cover to you. There it is. Woohoo. Um, it's a compendium of classic fairy tales with modern twists and modern morals. And um, last week was American Independence Day. And one of the characters um, is based on the president of America, Donald Trump, because he looks a little bit similar. Um, he also likes money and power, which I think President Trump likes. And I'm going to be reading you that story in just a moment. But before I do, uh, let me talk you through some of the other characters that we can see here on the cover. There you can see Trump being fired at by the gingerbread kid who's a refugee from fairy tale land and also by Zarine from the princess and the pea shooter. A story that shows violence isn't the answer. There you can see rapper Rapunzel um, swinging on her very long hair and Jack from Jack and the Baked Beanstalk dropping some baked beans onto Sleeping Brainy, who wants to be Chancellor of the Exchequer, but her dad wants her to be a princess. And there we have Cinderella um, at the bottom right-hand corner. Other characters include the Three Little Pugs, the Boy Who Cried Wool, Mouldy Socks and the Three Bears, Signor Spinocchio, Little Red Riding in the Hood, and there we can see the horrible frog from the princess and the snog. So time now to hear a little bit of the book, Trumple Stiltskin. In a faraway land called the United States of Craziness, or USK for short, there once lived an angry little man with a fuzzy orange hairpiece and a funny orange face. Although nobody knew his real name, he was nicknamed Trumple. Everyone thought that Trumple had been given his nickname because ever since he was a tiny baby, he couldn't stop trumping or breaking wind. He pretty much farted all the time. The problem had only worsened as he grew older because of his terrible diet of junk food and fizzy drinks. All the colouring and additives had turned both him and his weird wig bright orange. So much so that he was almost fluorescent. If there was one thing Trumple loved as much as himself, it was gold. As a baby, he wore gold nappies, sucked on a gold dummy and rattled a gold rattle whenever he was rattled. The older he got, the more and more gold he wanted. Oh, and power too. He wanted more and more of that. So as soon as he was old enough, he joined the family business, grabbing himself more and more gold and more and more power until he was completely in charge. But even that wasn't enough. Nothing was enough for Trumple, not the skyscrapers he owned, nor the companies he ran, nor the hotels and golf courses he had acquired, not even the fact he lived in a giant golden tower called Trumple Tower. Oh no, none of it was enough. He still wanted more. Trumple wanted to be king. The USK already had a kind and caring king, but Trumple wasn't going to let a silly little detail like that get in his way. I want to be king, he yelled from his golden high chair, throwing a tantrum and throwing the king and his daughter Marla into the palace's deepest dungeon. It was dark and dingy, with the tiniest little window so high up that you couldn't even see out of it. Trumple instantly set about redecorating the palace in his favourite colour. 
Yes, you guessed it, gold. And not just painted with gold-coloured paint. He wanted the real deal. Everything was to be pure gold. He wanted 900 golden mirrors, at least one in every room, so that he could look at himself all day long. He wanted to replace his normal-sized hairpiece with the biggest golden hairpiece in the kingdom. He even wanted a golden toilet to trump and do his business on. The toilet variety and the striking deals variety. Before long, the kingdom was running out of gold. The gold mines were empty and the people were struggling to keep up with Trample's increasing demands. Everyone in the kingdom had given him their gold and they were now poor and hungry and didn't even have proper health care. He had sold off the health care system in exchange for yet more gold. But Trample wasn't content because the palace still wasn't covered entirely in gold. He banged his tiny hands on his half gold table in a fit of fury. I want gold everywhere, he screamed. I want it everywhere now. Trumple turned such a luminous shade of tangerine that his advisers had to shield their eyes. Just as he was about to throw all his toys out of the pram, so to speak, one of his little aides piped up. I think the old king's daughter can spin straw into gold, your royal orangeness. Immediately, Trumple ordered Princess Marla to spin all the straw in the kingdom into gold. But Marla was an intelligent and stubborn young girl, and knowing she could strike a better deal, she refused. So Trumple made Marla an offer. If she could spin 10 kilometres of straw into gold, he would give her three chances to guess his real name. And if she guessed it correctly, he would free her and her father from the dungeons. As it was her only hope, Marla agreed. She spun and spun and spun until her fingers were red and raw and the entire palace was finally covered in gold. The household was so shiny and blinging that nobody could see where they were going. The servants kept getting dazzled and were constantly bumping into each other. Meanwhile, Marla was at her wit's end. She just couldn't guess Trumple's real name. She'd already had two really good guesses, but it turned out that Trumple wasn't actually called Poo Poo Head or Farty Farty Bum Pants. And now the time was fast approaching for her final guess. Marla's dad, the wise old king, had pondered the problem long and hard and suggested that perhaps Trumple was short for something. But what? Trumpleton? Trumple Smith? Trumple Poo Poo Head? Trumple Farty Farty Bum Pants? It was no use. All was lost. Marla stared forlornly into one of the golden mirrors Trumple had left in the dungeon so he could gaze at himself when he came to taunt the old king. As she watched a tear roll down her cheek, Marla spotted something in the corner of the mirror. Reflected through the bars of her cell window, she could just about make out a huge gold sign being hung by workmen over the palace gates. Nick Stilt Selp Mert, it read. Nick Stilt Selp Mert, thought Marla. That could be Trumple's real name. It certainly would make sense for a person as self-obsessed as Trumple to have his name emblazoned in gold across the front of his palace. But she had never heard of anyone called Nick Stilt Selp Mert before. Marla pondered this strange word for a moment, but only for a moment. I've got it, she cried. We're reading the word in the mirror. If you look at any word in the mirror, it will be spelt back to front. All we need to do is read the word backwards. Nick Stilt Selp Mert backwards is Trumple Stiltskin. Trumple Stiltskin, that's his real name. Marla and the king hugged each other and cried tears of happiness. They would finally be free. When they told Trumple Stiltskin his name, he was furious. He couldn't believe they had worked it out, locked away in a dungeon without newspapers or social media. How had they known? He just couldn't understand it. Not fair, he cried, kicking and screaming and spilling his milk everywhere. The orange colour in his face had reached nuclear levels and it seemed as though his entire head might explode. No, he cried as he let out a trump so terrific that the whole palace shook. It was the loudest fart Marla had ever heard. It was so forceful, in fact, that it sent Trumple Stiltskin flying into space, never to be seen ever again. The end. Postscript. Marla is currently studying international relations at a world-class university, while her father enjoys a successful career on the after-dinner speaking circuit and has his own TV series on Netflix. So I thought it'd be really fun if we had a go at drawing Trumple Stiltskin, but I would be no good at showing you how to draw Trumple Stiltskin because I'm not the illustrator. But I am more than pleased to say joining us right now is the illustrator of the Fearless Fairy Tales book. It's Rick and Parrot. Woo! Hello, Hello. Rick. Hello. Hi. 
I can see you're surrounded by drawings. Have you been drawing away during lockdown? I've been drawing, eating, reading, farting, everything. 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 Sounds like a fun existence. Drawing, reading um, and eating at least. Um, yeah. <laughs> right, so I'm more than excited uh, about drawing Trumpet Stills. And I have to say he's one of my favourite characters. Which was your favourite character to illustrate in the book? Moldy Socks. Ah, from Mouldy Socks and the Three Bears. Mouldy Socks, for those of you who yeah. don't know, is a very stinky little boy who has an iPad addiction, more or less, an addiction to his tablet and gaming. Yeah, he's a very fun character, uh, as is Trump and Stilskin. So, Rickon, if you could talk yeah. me through what I can do to replicate Trump and Stilskin. First of all, we need to have the page set to a portrait. Yep. Okay. So we need to make sure there's space at the top for his hair because Trumpel Stilton has lots of hair. Um, so I would say in the middle of the page, do a circle that's quite, quite big. Not small, but quite big. Okay. okay great. Then we're going to do his eyes. So two small circles here. In the middle. Right. Okay. Then we're going to do his pupils. So I like to put them as if he's gone cross-eyed, like this. Great. Now we're going to do his nose, which looks like a letter L, but like a wonky letter L. So just underneath one of the eyeballs, you do like a little, like that. So it looks like a sock, but a three quarter of a sock. Yeah, uh -oh. that's perfect. So now we have to do his eyebrows, which if you look at the real, his eyebrows <laughs> are really weird. <laughs> so they're almost crossed. So we do like a diagonal line here, a diagonal line there. Then we do oh, okay. some eyelashes. Oh, good lord. How to okay, some eyelashes See? like this. Like that. Eyelashes. Just yeah. A bit longer, a bit more longer. Longer. Yep. Okay. Yeah? Perfect. Yep. Now we're going to do a lower eyelid. So just underneath one, one of the eyes, you can do like an eyelid here, just to show he's a bit more angry. Okay, now we're going to draw his mouth. So I'm going to give him a cheeky smile. So like that, and give him a little buck tooth. Oh, okay. Okay, so now we're going to do his ears, so just on the sides of the face, two small ears. And we're going to go all the way down his chin, do one spot, all the way down his chin, down, maybe one or two other spots and all the way up. He's quite hairy, Trumpel Stiltskin. And we do some hairs coming off his spots. <clears throat> now we're going to do his body. So we're going to do a small rectangle just underneath his big head. Quite small. Perfect. Then about halfway up is where his trousers come. because he wears his trousers very high. Um, hmm. then, then two small, very small legs. Two small legs, like that. Great. Yeah. Then just in the middle here, we're gonna do his fly area. Okay. Now we're going to do his collar. So just in the middle 
a small tie. These very, yeah, very smart. Uh, and these, um, what are they called, lapels? Side yeah. bits. Yeah. And his arms are very small. So he has very small hands. So just at the top here, two very small arms. And pro probably the smallest hands you can ever draw. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Perfect. Okay. And maybe some shoes. So I just yeah. do little little shoes here and just color them in black. Uh, then this part is the part you can get crazy with his hair because if you look at the real example, his hair goes everywhere. So okay, what I want to do is in. go from here. Yep. Right. I'm just giving a close up of mine to check. Is it okay so far? Yeah. Has yours got something under his eye that I haven't done? Yes, no, that's right. You've got it. Yep, that's perfect. Okay, fine. Right, it's going back then. And now I'm ready for the hair. The hair. So you have to prepare yourself mentally okay. and physically. Yep. You have to enter yourself. I'm in the zone. Yeah. So just above his one of his ears, possibly this side, you need yeah. to just go a bit crazy. And and just let your inner hair out. Okay. And maybe it curls at the bottom. Because it, his hair goes everywhere. Oh my goodness. And it's not even windy. And at the bottom. I'm not, I'm not doing this right, I think. No, it's right. And underneath his ears, he has some hairs as well. And More? Last thing, last thing, around his eyes, you need to do a little shading because his eyes are almost grey around his eyes. So just with the pen, just do some slight shading around his eyes okay so shading gray around his eyes yeah there we go there you go that's trumple's tilt skin trumple stilt skin Trample still skin. Yay. Brilliant. Okay, you can check that mine's okay. Yes, look, the two yep, twins. Perfect. I feel that I the hair I didn't quite capture that right. Mine's Trample Still Skin's cousin brother, I feel. You might have to find your inner hair. Yeah, I feel that I haven't quite channeled the hair correctly. Yep. Maybe yours is sort of seems wilder and more fun. Uh, <laughs> there we go. I've just added to it now. But it that's cool. brilliant. Thank you so much. I'm going to perfect the hair and perfect my technique Excellent. of uh, drawing Trumple still skin. And uh, who knows? Maybe after next November, is that when the US election is? Uh, yeah. uh, we won't have to be drawing this chap anymore. It would be great Thank if we were. That's coded, if you see what I mean. Um, thank you so much, Rickin. I'm very much looking forward to the book coming out and seeing your you. illustrations come to life on the pages. Um, it's been an education. And uh, yeah, we'll catch you again soon. You do more drawing with us another time. I will, I will and I'll have a haircut by then. I'll look a bit more better. <laughs> you look great to me. Lovely to see you, Rick, and thanks. Thank you, Connie. Bye. 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 That was such fun. I hope you'll have a go at drawing Trumple Stiltskin. And uh, 
maybe you'll be able to capture the hair the essence of the hair that's what it's all about um hope you enjoyed this video that is it for today um but if you enjoyed it please subscribe and spread the word and i'll see you next time bye Hope you have an amazing summer holiday and hopefully I'll catch you after that. And if you need any light reading over the summer break, don't forget book two in the Cookie series, Cookie and the Most Annoying Girl in the World is out at the beginning of August. And it's really, really funny and really, really good. But then again, I'm biased. And while you're at it, Fearless Fairy Tales is available for pre-order as well. Bye.